Hey everyone, Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medical student, and today I'm going to be sharing with you why I always carry this bag with me when I go see patients. This um, bag of box amalgamation hybrid was actually recommended to me by a friend in my first year at medical school to get because it allows me to carry all my essential tools needed for me to do a comprehensive physical exam on a patient wherever I am, wherever I go, and it allows me to protect all the things inside here in addition to it being very portable. I don't need to lug around a giant backpack like I see some of my other medical student peers do. I just carry this with me. I can even put my phone in here if I want to, and it allows me to have those essential tools. And I'll be showing you what those tools are, and this is what most doctors should have on hand whenever a patient comes to visit them at the clinic. So when you open this bad boy up, can see that there's actually quite a lot of stuff here some you may recognize some you may not I'm gonna be going one by one what these are so the first thing here is this pen and this pen is very different it's not your average pen even though it may look like it it has like these little dots here um, to tell you uh, how big something is on your skin usually we use this to check uh, pimple size cyst sizes but also even TB tests. Some people need a TB skin test, if, especially if they work in the medical field. And it allows us to test how big something is when it comes to um, little spots on your skin. The next thing in this pen is a ruler. So this allows me to have a ruler on hand whenever I need um, to get a measurement in however, I don't need to lug around a big ruler most things in Medicine that needs to be measured are no longer than six inches and this has a five inch ruler If I need to get the circumference of something obviously I'll need a tape measure But at most clinics we don't do that usually you see that at like a dermatology or some other specialty clinics But for most most primary care settings we only need five to six inches in order to document it in your medical record if you have something that needs to be measured. Also, if I'm doing an eye exam in the day's visit, then I will use this circle meter to see how big your pupils are when I shine a light on it. And actually, funny thing is that this is actually not a pen pen, it's actually a light pen. So when I click on it, it has this really bright light that I can use to do eye exam so I check this eye and this eye and see if your eyes dilate or constrict depending on whether or not I shine a light to it or not I don't use this light just for eye exams even though that's the most common reason why I'd be using this light but if I'm doing a cervical exam or an anal exam and an oral exam then it allows me to see those cavities and brighten up those cavities so I can see it better and document it accurately so uh, this light is very handy for any type of exam that requires me to look inside a body cavity. The next thing I have is this tuning fork. And for most people, when they go see the doctor at the primary care clinic, this is not gonna be used. Usually we use this mostly for younger patients and also elderly patients. And this tuning fork actually allows me to test whether or not someone's hearing is what it's supposed to be. There's two tests that I do. One is called the Weber test. I bang the tuning fork and I put it on top of their head to see if they're hearing correctly through the Weber test and another test I do is back here to see if they can hear um, through their bony structures and hear the vibrations from the tuning fork and if you want to listen to how it sounds like I can bang it and put it close and that's kind of how it sounds like when you actually listen to the tuning fork. Another huge thing that I can do with this tuning fork other than test for someone's hearing ability is I can use the vibrations of the tuning fork to check if someone has diminished neural responses. If they're able to feel the tuning fork, if they suffer from neurological diseases or even more common diseases such as diabetes, which diminishes your sensation when it comes to pinpoint vibration. So I'll bang the tuning fork and I'll put it in the most distal bony prominence, such as the finger knuckle right here. And I can test whether or not a diabetic patient can feel that. And it allows me to accurately report whether or not a diabetic patient is 
having better outcomes or poorer outcomes and how to intervene when it comes to poorer outcomes if they're losing sensation in their fingers and their um, feet. The next thing I have is this pulse oximetry meter. This is a really cheap meter that you can get for 20 bucks on Amazon, CVS, or any health uh, related website. You can buy it yourself and keep track of your own health. But essentially what it does is that you click this button, you turn it on, you clamp it on your finger. I'm sure you've had it done to you before at a primary care clinic. You wait a couple of seconds and it allows you to see two really important um, parameters of your health and that is your resting heart rate and also your pulse oximetry. Your oximetry is the percentage that your blood is being oxygenated. So you want that number to be as close to 100% as possible. And it allows me to check how healthy our patient's heart rate is and how, and if our patient is getting enough oxygen into their blood. The next thing I have is this beautiful black reflex hammer that I got. It's really cool looking. I really enjoy the look of it. But essentially what it allows me to do is test your reflexes. You saw that those famous clips of the doctor testing your knee and your knee extending out. This is what the reflex hammer does. But in addition to that, there's a couple of other reflexes that I can check other than the knee. There's the ankle reflex, but also the triceps reflex and the brachioradialis reflex, which is reflex that's right here on your forearm. So that allows me to check if your nerves are working correctly. A lot of people wonder why, why does the doctor check my reflexes? What does that say? Well, if you don't have a reflex or if your reflex is too strong, that might indicate a neurological issue that we have to address. So that's why this reflex hammer is super, super important as part of the physical exam. But also in addition to that, there's a little pointy end at the end of this reflex hammer. And this allows me to have a second function with this hammer. This allows me to check whether or not you have pinpoint sensation. So if I take the pointy end and I just stroke your forearm, can you feel it? Can you feel that sensation? And that also tests for neurological damages and whether or not you need intervention when it comes to your neural senses. Again, diabetes patients also are heavily evaluated with this pointy part of the reflex hammer because they have reduced pinprick sensation as well later on in their course of their disease. And lastly, I have my stethoscope. I specifically opted in for a charcoal black James Bond black gray cold steel look with my stethoscope, but my stethoscope allows me to obviously listen to your heart sounds and your lungs to see whether or not your heart is beating correctly and it's making the right kinds of sounds, but whether or not your lungs are inflating correctly or not, or whether or not you have asthma, emphysema, bronchitis, stethoscope can actually diagnose quite a lot of issues in your body with just being able to hear what's inside. Actually, Beyond the lungs and the heart, I can actually use the stethoscope to check your tummy to see whether or not you have any tummy issues. And also, it allows me to check the health of the arteries within your abdomen, such as your renal arteries, whether or not enough blood is getting to your kidneys. You can sense a lot of things with just a stethoscope, and it's one of the biggest tools that I have in my hand for me to use to diagnose my patient. So this is the most prized tool in my little toolbox, but every single little thing in here is very important for me to do an accurate physical examination on my patient. So that's it for my little show and tell presentation of what's in my little medical bag. I wanted to show you a little bit about my personal life and what I do on the side when it comes to not making YouTube videos and not posting on social media. I hope you understood what a medical student does when it comes to doing uh, physical examination. So then the physician can come in and finish that physical and give you the right instructions you need to take care of your body. I hope you found it fun and interesting. And if you want me to show you more aspects of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis with patients and with also going through medical school, feel free to comment down below and let me know. And I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will share it with someone that will also enjoy it. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my social media. And I'll see you on the next video. This has been, thank you for tuning in.